right, hello, welcome back everybody, PayPal and Patreon are down below if you want to support me, only do so if you actually can, and apologies for any audio glitches, my mic is starting to fail after about eight years. So earlier this month, the Novokohovka dam in Ukraine was blown up, causing a draining of the reservoir that it held back, a reservoir that was responsible for supplying irrigation canals across the region of southern Ukraine, at least certain portions of it, the absence of which is going to be crippling for upcoming agriculture. And we're doing a quick look here at just how much that will be. So starting by just taking into account Ukraine's size on the global scale, a lot of pro-Russian accounts on Twitter initially tried to downplay the disruption of Ukrainian agriculture last year by the invasion by putting out the misleading figure that Ukraine is only responsible for about 3% of global grain production, which is a correct figure. However, it's a figure absent of any context. You see grain or cereal crops or basics, you know, things like wheat, maize, rice, are grown in almost every country on the face of the earth. Any country that, you know, is capable of it will try to grow as much as it can. So on the total global balance in terms of all of the grain grown across the world, Ukraine makes up about 3%. However, that's not where the issue lies. The issue lies in the fact that not every country is able to, you know, grow enough basic food crops to feed themselves. In fact, quite a large number of countries are dependent on imports from the open market. When it comes to market supply of grain, that's where the numbers get bigger. Ukraine's share of the available global grain market for food import dependent nations is around 10% or so, and grain exported from Ukraine tending to go to some of the, you know, more food desperate nations, like those around the Horn of Africa, Somalia, Ethiopia, Eritrea, South Sudan, Sudan, Yemen, across the sea there as well. And roughly, if Ukraine's excess agriculture, that is the agriculture beyond that which feeds its own population, were to vanish from the earth entirely and never come back, then within a couple of years, about 40 or more million people within that region would starve to death. That is not going to be the case, however, but it is going to be really, really bad and really grim. Looking at the specific region of Ukraine that is affected by the effective death of this aqueduct system now, at least for the next two years or so, would be the quickest that everything could be restored. That portion of southern Ukraine is responsible for about 25% of Ukraine's production, and the split in Ukraine is about half and half, or about the first half of Ukraine's agriculture is consumed domestically, and the second 50% is all exported to the world at large. So minus 25% is minus half of one of those two halves. And as is the case with any country, you know, you're going to cut off your exports first. You're not going to uh, cut off your own food supply. And so with Ukraine being about 10% of the global available food market for import dependent nations, half of that is going to be cut off after this summer slash fall. So that is minus 5% from the grain market availability for food import dependent nations. So about half of their export level, which would imply based on the numbers I said earlier, that potentially 20 million people might starve to death in the next couple of years. However, that thankfully is also not the case because around the world there are, you know, extra reserves of grain and foodstuffs and also massive disruptions have happened in the past which have been occasionally compensated. However, it usually always ends up not being entirely enough, as will almost certainly be the case this time around, especially because of just how heavy of a hit this is, and especially given where most of Ukraine's grain exports usually go. You know, nations that are already in not the best food or any supply of anything situation to begin with. And this is again on top of the, granted not as large as this one, supply disruption that was already ongoing since the invasion started last year. And both of those combined now, this coming winter or so, late fall through early spring, are potentially going to result in between one to three million deaths from starvation or disease brought on by malnutrition in the Horn of Africa region, 
plus Yemen, Sudan, and South Sudan. So that's it for this one. Like the video if you appreciate the coverage. Subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. Huge number of other episodes covering all kinds of stuff. If you want to listen to those, you can subscribe to my Catch channel as well. And no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect all of you. And I will see you all around next time.